Welcome. <laughs> Enjoy the song a little bit before we start today because it's about you. Tell him. Tell God what you want today. September 20th. How about it? Do you need a little bit more power today? Woo! Call him up. Protestant Christian missionary Norman Edgar. Broadcasting from our home here in St. Charles, Missouri. Missouri is in the center of the U.S. Our home, at Selma and I, we are in the center. We are the center. I know you guys love to hear that. Everything revolves around us. How's that? How's that? <laughs> Uh, if you believe that, I'll, I'll sell you a bridge. Uh. Call Jesus. Somebody. Oh, that's a great song. I like that song, Jesus on the Main Line. Today we're at, on Periscope, we have 30,095 views. Up to date, as of yesterday, a total viewership, people that tuned in to us for whatever, wherever how long they watch and comment. As of yesterday, we're at 30,095 views on Periscope. If you like us, you can click a heart. It's like a like. So it's obvious someone likes us a little bit. We're at 259,936 hearts. That's simply amazing to me. On YouTube, we keep a count there too. We're at, as of yesterday, we're at 63,202 views on YouTube. You know, we're not monetized or anything like that. We, we don't need the money, all right? Simple as that. You're to be content where you're at in life. But I like to have a whole lot more things and uh, to do the gospel work. You know, that's the old excuse. Oh, God, if you give it to me, I'll do this for you, God. If I win that lottery, we're pretty, we're pretty content with our meager Social Security that we receive. And uh, so we're okay. Selma works a little bit, 20 hours a week yet. All right. We're doing all right. How about you guys out there? You doing all right? Are you slaving for the man, as they say? Yet? All right? Just know that in life, there's no shortcut. Most of you think, the millennials especially, hey, hi there, guys. Uh, the millennials think that if they get some kind of degree, specialized field, that they'll get a good paying job and they can get their BMW and live happily ever after in La La Land. All right. But I'm going to tell you the honest truth about this life of ease. All right. There really is no such thing as a life of ease. All right. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian. There is no life of ease. If you think for one moment that if you become a Christian it's smooth sailing, you're in la-la land. And if you're not spiritually born again, and you think you're going to earn your way by hard work and perseverance, you're in la-la land. Alright? It doesn't work like that, folks. I don't care what your mommy and papa told you or what you hear some uh, somebody tell you some Hollywood actor says or actress says to you. 
Let me tell you, in the beginning, God put a curse on man for the disobedience. He said, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow. And you know what the devil's trying to do ever since that day? He's trying to convince you you don't have to work. Why? He's trying to tell you, well, you can have a life of ease. Just follow me in my ways. Do anything you want. See, there's no curse on you. Look how easy you got your life. See? People that are, uh, you can just rest assured, everyone that's living this kind of a, a life of ease, not so much pressure on life, just going to their boring, mundane, everyday 9 to 5 job. Whether it's in a factory, law firm, it doesn't make any difference. A nurse, doctor, mundane, in, everyday, same old, same old. Nuclear physicist, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference what it is. All it does, all jobs are for one reason today in this world, is to give you the illusion that you're not working by the sweat of your brow. The devil is right behind all of that. Do you, I'll tell you a story. As a Protestant Christian missionary for 43 years and still going yet, folks, it's not over for us. We formed a non for profit in 1978. We're still rocking today for Jesus. Five tours in the Himalayan mountains and seven years in New Mexico these past 43 years. And we work with the Hmong Hill tribe people and the Hmong are part of Southeast Asian refugees that came out of Laos during the Vietnam conflict. And let me tell you something. Here's a true story. I'm, I'm Hector. Oh, Hector. All right. Hi, Hector. I'm Norman. Et, I'm Norman Etker. <laughs> I like that, Hector. <laughs> My name is spelled O-E-T-K-E-R, Norman Etker. You can Google it. Hey, matter of fact, I'll just write that down for you. Hold on there, Hector. Let me write that out for you, buddy. Got my board right here. Oh, sorry. Let me put this on my board so you can see. And I guess it's better to do it this way. Hold on. I'm going to be like that Ross guy and show you how to paint, huh? All right, here we go. Norman. All right. N. O. That's an R. And we'll shade that. <laughs> you ever watch that Ross guy? Man, he's good. O E T K E. He makes it so easy to <laughs> watch him draw and paint. I mean, all right, here's my name. All right, see it? Norman Edker. You can Google that. O-E-T-K-E-R, the O is silent, it's pronounced Etker, it's a German name, Norman Etker, that's how you say it, really, in Germany there's no E and there's an umlaut over the O, it's Utker, but, you know, in America here, in the United States, they don't have that umlaut sound, oof, so they tried to put the E in there, and that's how it's so confusing today. Alright, back to what I was talking about. In Southeast Asia, these people from Laos had to cross. I'm from Turkey, Etker. <laughs> hey, that's good, man. Welcome. Alright, hope that you'll convert and become spiritually born again and leave Islam and join the truth. Okay, I hope that happens to you. Alright, but anyway, the... The Hmong Hill tribe people that came from Laos, escaping the Vietnam communist aggression, the, the Hmong that helped the CIA during the Vietnam conflict had to flee their country, Laos. Really, it's not their country. I love you, Turkey. Hey, we love you too. We love Turkey, okay? And uh, the Hmong are not really Lao citizens. They're just a nomadic tribe living on the border areas. Laos is not their country, basically. They claim no sovereignty to any country. That's why they're a problem wherever they are, okay, because they live on the border. 
And normally there's a criminal element. Normally, no, they are the criminal element. Drug smugglers, that's what they're known for. It's that simple. That's what the Hmong were in Laos when the CIA hooked up with them. All right, it's that simple. That's their history. Illumini. <laughs> Ah, forget that. You believe in Star Trek, too, huh? <laughs> All right, but anyway, I talked to a lot of the Hmong, and when they had to escape Laos, they had to go across the Mekong River to get to Thailand to the refugee camp. But they had boats that patrolled, the communists did, patrolled the water in the river, the Mekong. And they would shoot to kill anybody they caught trying to swim across. And these guys were praying to God, God help me, help me, while they were praying like crazy. And a lot of them got across the Mekong. They were scared to death. Now they went into them refugee camps, and when you go into a refugee camp, a host country that you think you might be going to, these Hmong went all over. France, Belize, United States, Germany, they went everywhere, all right? But you had to learn about the host country, and host country, the majority asked about religion. So they said, oh, yeah, okay, Mason, CIA. <laughs> you're in La La Land, aren't you? 5'7", uh, 3'7", five, seven, five, seven. you're in La La Land. You've got them all. Uh, you must be exciting uh, life you live in that world. La La Land Plus, that's where you're at. But anyway, so these guys in the refugee camp in Thailand, the Hmong, that were coming to the U.S. had found, had to understand the language and then try to understand the culture of the United States. So the culture of the United States is Christianity, all right? So that's what they say, all right? But the United States is no more Christian than the devil is Jesus, all right? So they all accept Jesus. They all accept God. They all accept the Christian faith. And then when they come here, they got these great stories how God saved them when they swam across the Mekong. Now he did tell you story. Hello from Turkey, Mason Illuminati. Ah. So, and then as I talk to these guys, great stories, right? And then they're all on fire for God and Jesus. But returning and talking with them some years later, them stories are gone. The old shaman is back in business. They're back doing the same old, same old, right? Worshiping them devils, all right? Today, I start this conversation talking about how people work their boring nine-to-five jobs, no matter what field. From a laborer to a neuroscientist, it doesn't make any difference. You got a nine to five job. And a lot of people, it's just boring, everyday, routine type stuff and get paid for it. Government, lawyers, doctors, nurses, police, far boring, boring. Right? It's just boring jobs to make money to live by. What the devil doesn't want you to understand and realize is that you're under a curse in your life. The curse is from God. It's called original sin. When Adam disobeyed God, the curse that was put on Adam and all his descendants was that they would have to work by the sweat of their brow. Today, 2,000, almost 5,000, 6,000 years after the fact, here now we have a situation in this world where people don't work. And the jobs you have are routine and boring. It wants to give you, you want to have the illusion that work, you don't really have to work at all. You're not out in the field sweating and to toiling with uh, groundbreaking labor. All right? You understand, and people that do that work, that work in the fields, they're plum happy to work in the fields. Because they don't consider it work either. You understand, people get used to their 9 to 5 job, no matter what it is. All right, You get in a comfort zone in your job. And it's just boring. And I believe the reason people leave their jobs is they're bored. 
Or, you know, don't get along with their co-worker, don't get paid enough money, but, you know, you, you never... <laughs> It's like trying to catch a tiger by the tail, getting a good paying job, right? And you go from here to there, thinking you're going to do better. But the whole thing is to cover up that you're under sin, the original sin. And people, the devil spirit, this rebellious spirit has working through any individual they can. You, they're listening to this broadcast, you have been subject to the whims and thoughts of evil continuously. It's called temptation. The Bible says the devil roams around trying to capture your imagination. Okay? I'll give you an example. Uh, some kid out some way, male or female, doesn't make any difference, is playing the guitar. And that old devil comes along and says, hey man, you can be cool, you need to get, you need to take a little, smoke a little marijuana, you know. Do a little harder drugs and you can really get into yourself and play really well. And the kid believes it. And the kid gets hooked up on drugs. There's people who believe, oh, well, if I just drink some booze and alcohol, I'll get along better. I'll go to these parties where everybody's drinking strong uh, drinks, and I'll fit in with everybody. All right? It's the same old, same old story all the time. The devil is tempting his people. All right? And the people think that they are making their own decisions. The devil's going to try to fool you that you're not under a curse and that you are in control of your life and that there's no other outside force dominating or controlling your life. And that's the trick of the devil, continuously, that you think you're in control of your life. And really you're not. You're under the curse. Now, people, and this is a little bit tough for you to understand that aren't spiritually born again, but you're going to hear it anyway. You that think you're a Christian. There's a lot of people out here on this old planet that think they're a Christian. You ought to see this hypocritical mess in St. Louis, Missouri. All right, the Protestant Christian Bible, the truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, is explicit about supporting and praying for those in authority over you, your government. Right? Explicit about it. There's no ands, ifs about it. That's what the Protestant Christian New Testament truths of Jesus the apostle and evangelist states unequivocally that you're to pray for those in authority over you and your local government. That's what it actually says. But you should, yeah, I know that some of you probably haven't seen, but this, this <laughs> they had a bunch of uh, false Christian leaders from the Roman Catholics to Mormons to Jehovah Witnesses to uh, Islam Baptists. <laughs> Baptists. <laughs> These guys are up walking down the streets and saying, look, their hands up, don't shoot. What is, you know, they're supposed to be supporting the, the, the Lordship of Jesus. These are the worst hypocrites and you wonder why the world is absolutely screwed up. It's these guys right here. They're under the curse. And this is the problem with Christianity. The so-called religious leaders have screwed up Christianity for the past 2,000 years that Jesus Christ is a joke. People don't even think that Jesus is real or was real. Today, the millennials that come, come in, they have no idea. The millennials are 
absolutely clueless in the dark about Jesus Christ and becoming a spiritually born again believer. You go to these phony churches today in Christianity, they don't care about your salvation going to heaven or hell. They want the support. You will you cannot believe in St. Louis, Missouri, it's all about them getting more people to pay them more money to come to their church so they can pay their electric bill and that they can go on a vacation. These guys are so called leaders. I listen to one of these guys supposed to be his hot shot leader here in St. Louis at this Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm on a rant, all right? <laughs> all right. Are you German? You bet. Otker, O-E-T. Hey, I got it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Right here. Look at this, man. I'm, I'm ready for you. Wait a minute. Let me get out of the way. That's my name. Otker, O-E-T-K-E-R. Google it. Norman Etker, O-E-T-K-E-R. All right. Got it? Good. All right. Today, all people are were born in sin. You that are listening to me, your spirit is corrupted by sin. You don't have a clean spirit. All right. So your proclivity and knowledge of evil, Norman Ecker. Do you know Doctor Utker? Yes, he's my great great uncle. My daughter visited with them in Germany. We are directly related to Dr. Utker. All right? Baking products out of Germany. Okay? So, today the proclivity for all humanity is to sin because of your spirit that dwells inside of you. One of the truths that and that few people realize is that before man sinned, Adam and Eve did not know right from wrong. They were perfectly innocent. All right? Adam and Eve, before they disobeyed God, did not know right from wrong. They were innocent. Everything was lovely. It was one. I mean, I just can't tell you. We have no knowledge of that kind of life, except we can get a piece of that when we're spiritually born again. When you're spiritually born again, you are made by the Creator, by God, His Holy Spirit, a new person in Christ. Your spirit has been cleansed by a atoning process that God instituted and that God says this is how you remove sin out of your life by offering a perfect sacrifice. This is just God's way. You can read about it in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, God became man in Jesus, born of a virgin by the Holy Spirit. He did not, Jesus did not commit any sin. He offered his life, the shedding of his blood, as an offering to the Father for the removal of sin from humanity. So Jesus did that. So when you now, by God's grace, grace is His power, strength, love, and favor, God's grace enables you to come to God and say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious life, that you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you want your sins removed, that you will obey. Repent means to turn to the truths of Jesus. When you, when you agree to those three things and say those three things with your mouth, you know, God says, I will supernaturally change you and you will become a new creature in Christ. That means your spirit within your life is changed. You will immediately experience love and forgiveness in your life. 
You will be a new person in Christ. All things passed away and all things become new. Your proclivity, your desire to sin is gone. The temptation's going to come at you, but your desire to do evil is gone. Your desire to cheat, steal, lie, and do all manner of evil is gone. The temptation will come at you, but the New Testament says to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's for those that are spiritually born again. But God then says in the New Testament to the spiritually born again that trials and testings are coming to you. God's not bringing evil to you. God's going to test you. So the question then is, what is or how does God test his people? All right, here's a good example. Real life, all right? In the New Testament, you are going to read, if you've been spiritually born again, if you've said to God you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards God, if you've said you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you said that you repent and turn to the truths of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, if you did that, you are spiritually born in because the grace of God is the power, strength, and love of God that enabled the favor from God for you to say those things. You can't say those things to God in your own strength. God's enabling power is called grace, which enables you to have that conversation with God. You are saved by grace, God's power, strength, love, and favor. He enables you to do that. Most of the time, we have no idea that's happening. But after you're a Christian, here God comes along and says, Now you're going to be tested. But God doesn't use evil to test you. All right? The way it works is like this. You'll be reading in that Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. And you're going to come to this place that says where Jesus says, Go ye into all the world. All right? Teach and make disciples. All right? The great commission called by Jesus. You're gonna look, you're gonna read that. If you've been spiritually born again, if you're living for Jesus, obeying that Protestant Christian Bible, and you know who you are if you're for real. If you belong to some church, you're not you're just lost. You're just a religionist. If you tell me you're a Methodist, Baptist, Pentecost, you're just a religionist. You know, you're clueless, all right? What is your name? Hey, man, I'm ahead of you. Look at this, man, right here. Oh, Norman Etker. Got it? O-E-T-K-R. Google it. You'll like, take a screenshot. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. I'm 71 years old, been a missionary 43 years. Five tours in the top, or... Uh, in uh, Southeast Asia and seven years in Mexico. All right. When you're spiritually born again, you will have trials and testings from God. God doesn't test you with evil. All right. You go hang out. How do you do? Good. How are you? Uh, I can see English is not your first language. Well, how do you do? Good. Hello. When you're tested by God, it is to do God's way and will. The testing is, do you believe that God will, in fact, take care of you? Well, well, I, I, I believe, hello from Belarus. Hey, hi, Belarus. Welcome. Today is the day of salvation. I hope you in Belarus will love Jesus, follow Jesus, 
Read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament words of Jesus, the apostles, and the evangelists. I hope that that will happen. When you're tested in going through trials as a Protestant Christian, if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the trials and testings you'll go through are not temptations from the devil. God's got a particular plan. And the plan is going to be, do you believe God's word? And that's what the test is going to be on in your life. God will, will speak to you. God will, not in an audible voice. He could if he wanted to. But most of the time, he will inspire you with verses of scripture. You'll look at a verse and you'll remember that and then all of a sudden you're going through a real tough time about something and the verses about trusting God, trusting Jesus will come to mind to your memory. And you'll decide on those moments, do I believe the words of Jesus that he loves me and will never forsake me? When you're in the deepest, deepest time, okay, when trials and troubles come, all right, trials and troubles come, do you believe that Jesus is still with you? That all things are working together for good? Do you believe that? Now, the person that's not spiritually born again, of course, they don't believe that. They think it's all nonsense. But the trials and testings of God are for you to show you your faith and trust in God. And let me tell you something, it's not an easy thing. You're going to be tried, and God, through Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, tells you that from the get-go, from the beginning, in the writings, you'll see in the New Testament that there's trials and tribulations that you will go through. And why is that? Why does this gift from God have to be tried into your life? It's a gift given to you. Listen, it's a gift of grace. God's gift to you. God's giving you a gift saying, Here, I'm making a way by my enabling power of grace, which is His power, strength, love, and favor to you. I'm giving you this gift of grace so that you can enter into a relationship with me. God gives that grace to you to enter in. You enter in by God's help. And now... Once you're in the gift and actually believe you received the gift and walking in the gift, you will see God now is going to say to you, this is the gift. Hang on to it because there's going to be trials and testings coming to you that's going to prove to you that the gift is real from me. When you go through the trial after it's over, you remain faithful, you will see. Wow, this gift is real. It's real to me in my life. You understand? Not some generic promise to the world out there, but God help me during my particular time in my particular trial testing in my personal life. When God's tries and gives a testing to his spiritually born again people, it is because you began your Christian experience by the gift of grace in your life. All right? <coughs> Today is the day of salvation. Today, when there's three things to become a Christian. Number one, you will say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious life. Your rebellious attitude towards God. 
Number two, you'll embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Three, you'll repent. Repent means to turn to the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus. You will read. You will obey. If you read the New Testament and decide not to do it, you're not a Christian. You don't have a choice as a Christian to say, Oh, I think I'll follow the Methodist. Oh, no, I'm going to follow the Lutheran. Oh, no, I'm going to follow the Baptist. Oh, I'm going to be an Amish. Oh, I'm going to the Pentecostal. Oh, I'm going to follow Osteen. Oh, I'm going to look at Benny Hinn. Oh, I'm going to be the charismatic. I'm going to Messianic movement. You know, the Jews for Jesus group. These are all meaningless religions. They do nothing. They aren't spiritually born again people. They all are religions. They have made an image of their God the way they want it to be on paper. They are wordsmiths. They have created an image on paper in traditional doctrine that they worship and follow. You'll find out if you, I am a missionary and been one for 43 years, you will find out when you go in the mission field, whether it be in your own town in a, in a poor neighborhood, normally that's where you'll see it, but you can go in any third world country in the world and you see a Christian, so-called Christian church, and all you're seeing is a little Baptist church, a little Methodist church. They're not telling you the truths of Jesus. They're telling you, the third, third world country, how they view, right? Do you trust in God? Oh, okay, I didn't, I'm not sure. Do I trust in God? I, yes, I trust in uh, the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists, as revealed in the Protestant Christian Bible. So, yes, I trust in that God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not your God. Not the God of Islam or Roman Catholic. Not the God of Buddha. Alright? Now if you're talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then we're on the same page. But if you, that ask that question, if you're not spiritually born again, your God is the devil that you're calling God. Remember, the devil took Jesus up on the temple and he told Jesus, the devil said to Jesus, I will give you all these cities and kingdoms, nations of the world, They're, they belong to the devil. He said to Jesus, if you will worship me, Jesus, I will give you all these kingdoms. The gods of those kingdoms was evil, the devil. Are you thinking from Russia? Are you thinking from Russia? Are you thinking from Russia? Well, I appreciate your question, but... Are you thinking, I, you must be saying, or am I thinking about Russia? I don't know. No. All the kingdoms of the world are all the nations of the world. United States, Germany, all the nations, France, Spain, all the nations of Africa, Arabia, all the nations of the world are controlled by the devil. Buddha is of the devil. Islam, the devil. Roman Catholic, of the devil. All these Protestant denominations that have their own doctrines that are contrary to the plain truth of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist, as you read in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, all the Protestant denominations that have doctrine practices, traditions, which delete, remove 
decide that the truths of Jesus are not applicable for today, all Protestant denominations that have that line of thought through their theological societies is evil, the devil. Pretty simple. God said, Jesus, who's God, said, if you love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor. That's the number one thing here, folks. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you love that God, then you're going to follow on through with what that God did through saving humanity because that same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said, He sent Jesus into this world. He sent Jesus out of this spiritual substance we call God. Get this, this spiritual substance that we call God, part of that spiritual substance came to the world by the Holy Spirit of God that caused Mary, a sinful woman, to conceive and have a baby named Jesus. A God baby. The whole purpose was to atone. Jesus' purpose was to atone for sins. The original sin from Adam and Eve. Thus, all subsequent sins committed thereafter. What? Yes, I'm from Russia. I'm Russia. Well, hi, Russia. Welcome. Today... What you guys in Periscope land there in Russia, United States, Europe, Asia, Australia, what you don't understand is that today, right now, you're listening to me, and this is a truth that you probably have never heard. All human beings on this planet, right now, 7 billion, 6 billion, whatever it is, are freed from the power of sin and destruction over your life right now. Because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. The great gospel message of salvation to be spiritually born again is what being a Christian is all about. But if you just belong to a church and try and do good deeds for people, you can join any religion you want and do that. You're free from the power of sin. A lot of times people think, well, I'm a Christian, but I, my life is so terrible. Just remember, if you've been spiritually born again, the rain falls on the just and unjust. In other words, here I am in St. Charles, Missouri. Missouri is in the center of the U.S. Evil is all around us. I'm in a neighborhood here. There's evil in this neighborhood. You know what evil is? It's people that don't believe in Jesus, don't obey, they're evil. That could be your grandmother, your aunt, your uncle, your mom and dad to say, oh, you don't have to be born again, just be a good person. That's evil, that's sin and rebellion from the devil. That could be your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. And U.S. money is main religion, isn't it? <laughs> no. The U.S. is just like Russia. People. People are evil. Russian people are evil. American people, evil. France, people, evil. Spain, people, evil. Chinese people, evil. All people are evil except those that have been spiritually born again to become a Christian. Three things to become a Christian. Number one, you'll say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards God. Number two, you will ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Master. Three, you'll read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament and obey what you understand Jesus is saying. Not what I say or what some guy in a church house will tell you. Those three things you will do. And you're able to do that because of God's gift of grace that enables you, gives you the power to do it. It's 
God sent Jesus to save you. You that hear my voice today there in Russia, wherever it is, all right, let me just give you a, an example of this power of the gospel message to set you free of sin and degradation and guilt. What is the topic? You. You are in sin. That's the topic. I'm going to give you some stats. You can you see that up there, godspokesman.com? My name's Protestant Christian missionary Norman Edgar. I'm broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the center of the U.S. I'm going to give you some stats. On Periscope, right now we're at 30,095 views. Hearts on Periscope, we're at 259,936 hearts. On YouTube, GodSpokesman.com has been viewed 63,202 times. That's these broadcasts that we're talking about. People from around the world, we upload to our website, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, VK, around the world. You are the sinner. You're the one that's not right with God. God sent Jesus to save you, and, and I, I'm firmly committed that God started this for me to come on Periscope a year ago because the millennials, they don't, they don't know anything. They're the most intelligent group on the planet now the millennials are, but their, their mom and dad are the Generation X. And they are the rebellious, hateful people towards God. So the, the millennials, they don't have a clue about God or Jesus. They just think religion, uh, you can say, practice some yoga. And <laughs> they, have, they haven't got a clue about how to be spiritually born again. Their parents are clueless rebels, just like the millennials. They're clueless. They don't have an idea what it's about. They are intelligent, but they're clueless about how to be spiritually born again. You can ask a millennial, hey, have you talked to your mom and dad about becoming a Christian? It's like, duh. That's like saying, is Captain Kangaroo real? <laughs> I guess they wouldn't even know who Captain Kangaroo is. <laughs> Millennials are in a real fix. They're not hearing the truth. They get wrapped up in some political or whatever's cool on the campus today. But man, it, that campus thing is so screwed up. <laughs> it's just a joke. The people that say they're evangelicals, the Christians, they're no more Christian than a man in the moon. They'll fight with you in a drop of a hat. They'll protest right along with you. That's not being Jesus' father. Can you see Jesus with the sign out there? Can you see Jesus throwing rocks through windows, cursing at people, <laughs> blocking traffic? Can you see Jesus leading that mob? Can you see Jesus with his hands straight up in the air? Give me a break. That's not Christianity. That's just another false, rebellious, religious mob. Sorry, sir, what is your job? <laughs> well, you don't have to apologize. It's okay. I am a Protestant Christian missionary. All right? If you want to become a Christian, there's three things to become spiritually born again, as Jesus says. Number one, you will have to say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards Him. Number two, you will have to embrace Jesus as your Savior and Lord and Master. And number three, you have to repent. Repent means to turn to the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus. You will read what Jesus says. You will obey what you understand. If you read what Jesus says and you understand and you refuse to do it, you are not a Christian. Okay? That's today's 
so-called Christianity, a bunch of rebels. Today, Protestant denominations have their own doctrine, their own belief. They are not followers of Jesus. They're followers of their own tradition. You can go on the internet now and look up any denomination you want and read their doctrinal statements. They leave out whole books of, from the New Testament because they don't believe them. They don't think they're for today. So they, they take this out, add this. They make a God the way they want it to be. That's evil. All Protestant established traditional denominations today are evil. Go to any country you want to go to and look how Christianity is doing there. It is no more... It's regarded as a social welfare organization that's going to give you some food or clean your teeth or something or dig a well for you or show you how to grow fish in a pond. That's not the function of the Protestant Christian missionary. That's a necessary job of the social welfare NGOs of the world. Duh! The devil inspired all of that. The devil is in these Protestant Christian so-called denominations. The devil has watered down every Protestant denomination and made it just non the powerless to do anything except to follow what they want. If you want to be a rebel, join a church. You want to be a spiritual rebel, join any Protestant church, because that's where you're going to be. You will read the New Testament, and you will see the group you're with. They're no more hitting the streets leading people to Jesus than a man in the moon. They always talk about it. They got a select person that they'll send a hundred dollars to every month and tell you this is this is all we got to do, and you come to our little potluck dinner and give us more money so we can go on vacations and send our kids to school and all that and buy new cars. That <laughs> people believe that is that's what it ought to be. You got pastors who think they are entitled to be paid for something that was given to them by the grace of God. All these people who think, I'm not Christian, I like your spook because I'm here. I like your speak because I'm here. Good. I hope you accept Christ. Three things to become a Christian. Number one, you are going to say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious life. Number two, you're going to want Jesus as your Lord and Master. Number three, you will read the New Testament, the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, the words of Jesus, you will decide if you're going to obey. What you understand, not what some preacher tells you, not what I tell you, you're going to read the words of Jesus and you're going to say, believe it, do it, or not. You do it, you're going to be a Christian. You don't do it, you're a sinner yet. There's no 50-50. There's no, oh, I'm always going to be a sinner all my life. No. The Protestant Christian Bible says you can be a new creature in Christ and all things passed away. When you meet God's requirements. And number one, the only way you're going to have this conversation with God is by grace. God's grace, the gift to all humans on this planet. So that all humans can never say, Well, I, could do, I was in such dire straits. My, uh, our country was being bombed, rocketed. Uh, we had no food or water. We were in the Sierra Desert and nothing. We were dying. The children were dying. I couldn't be a Christian. No. Grace. 
Wherever evil is, grace much more abounds, the Bible says. Grace. You are going to say to God one time in your life, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards Him. Two, you're going to embrace Jesus. You're going to say, I want Jesus as my Master and Savior. Three, you're going to obey what Jesus says in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. When you do that, supernaturally, God will create within you a new spirit. Your spirit now is evil. The direction of your spirit, the, the, uh, the desire, the proclivities of your spirit is to embrace evil and to enjoy evil in your spiritual darkness that you live. Your spirit is in sin, original sin, inside. That's your desire, is to stay in spiritual darkness. This whole thing about Jesus and becoming a Christian is something that the darkness fights against. The darkness inside your life, your spiritual darkness does not want to come to the light of Jesus and the truth. The Bible is clear with earthquake. Yeah, they've been going on for millennials. Okay. Two thousand years ago, people believed Jesus was returning them. And each generation, each hundred years have passed. Can you pray for Puerto Rico, please? Why should I pray for Puerto Rico? Why? Why should I pray for Puerto Rico? Why should I pray for Puerto Rico? I had someone to ask me to pray. Hello from Paris. Hi, Paris, France. Why should I pray for Puerto Rico? Someone asked that I should pray. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this is the internet. You can believe in Donald Duck. All right? It's okay. That's what you were trained when you were a kid. Just like Roman Catholics say the same thing. Protestant Christian people say the same thing. <laughs> okay? They all say the same thing. They're God's truth. <laughs> it's a joke, man. These All Protestant evangelicals are just like you. Islam, Roman Catholicism, and Protestant denominations are all equal. Meaningless religions. There's only one truth. Okay. There's only one God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that sent the God-man Jesus to this planet. The first religion of the world was the Jewish religion. It's the only religion that describes the beginning and creation of our present world. It's the only religion that describes how sin entered in. Mohammed is a joke. 600 years after Christ is on, he copies, Mohammed copies, the Old Testament writings and mixes it with the New Testament writings and makes a Koran. Anybody with the honest, that's halfway intellectually honest, will see the only reason that the Koran was made was in rebellion to the Roman Catholic takeover of North Africa. 
for 500 years since Christ of year 500, that was a predominantly Christian era, all of the Mediterranean basin. Mohammed is just as bad as, and his followers are as bad as the Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholics killed people in the name of Jesus. Mohammed and his followers killed people in the name of Jesus. The white Protestants killed the Roman Catholics, 1600 to 1700. There was up to 15 million people killed between white Protestant and Roman Catholic. Killing each other, holy water, holy, <laughs> holy wars. Evil, all of them are evil. Mohammed, evil. Roman Catholicism, the popes, evil. Protestant Christians, evil. The Church of England, evil. Killing in the name of God is evil for all people. Black, white, yellow, it doesn't make any difference. But humanity is an evil, sin-filled place. Evil will kill everything. There's only one hope. That's in Christ. The gift of grace is given to all people. God says, I will help you to be saved from the evil that's all around you by my gift of grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. It says in the New Testament writings of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, that wherever evil is, grace, God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people, much more abounds. I can't tell you how many people from the Middle East are so scared, they're so afraid, if they say anything about Jesus or God, that's not in line with what the Islamist faith says, they'll find them and bring great persecution to their life. You talk about fear. Muslims are, are so afraid, and, and that's the devil. The arrogance and condescension of Roman Catholicism is of the devil. Protestant Christians here in the United States, in Europe, in Australia, evil doctrines. They make up any doctrine they want. You got people that don't believe in hell. You got people that believe they come from another planet. We got people that believe that... Oh, you cannot believe the goofy, stupid stuff you will read in the Bible that they say is from God. The Mormons think that they, the, the stuff, the, the animals, the fruits, the vegetables that are here on the earth were brought here by gods from another planet that came here and had sex with women here. Evil. These people are Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, the Mennonite, Amish, growing beards, wearing hats, no electric, horse and buggy, giddy up. And this is God's life. This is what God's told them to do. They don't care about anything except their little life. The great commission called by Jesus was for all spiritually born again people to go forth, teach and make disciples. But the Protestant denominational churches have screwed up so bad for 2,000 years the goodness and love of God that it's a joke church today. They don't care if you go to heaven or hell. They want your money. Facebook, YouTube, all it is is a joke to get your money. I can't tell you how many people have contacted me 
And it's always the same. They got the children. They got the widows. They got the orphans. I need money for seed. I need money for cars. I need money for this, a building, whatever. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is the mother of all bad things. You get you you got it. Evil. Islam, Roman Catholic, Protestant, all their denominational religions, evil. Buddha, Hindu, evil. Islam, evil. Roman Catholic, evil. Protestant Christian denominational doctrines, evil. There's only one book, the Protestant Christian Bible, Old and New Testament. Only the New Testament is the rule and guide for today's spiritually born again believer to follow. You will read it. You will decide. Now, I won't decide for you. If you follow Norman, if you follow Mohammed, if you follow the Pope, you follow Benny Hinn, you follow Osteen, you're a sucker. Evil. There is no God. <laughs> Trunk, <laughs> spoken by a true devil man <laughs> or person. <laughs> That's exactly what the devil wants, and you're his mouthpiece. <laughs> wow. Do you realize God said, God said, listen to this. Jesus, who's God, said, to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor. But you that just wrote there's no God, you want evil. You don't, but you don't see that. You choose evil. You want evil on your mom and dad, your brothers and sister, your wife, husband, your children who just wrote that there's no God. You want evil. You want wickedness and evil to destroy your own family. Just evil. My wife Selma is going to be coming on at 11 o'clock. That means she's going to start broadcasting in about 55 minutes. So I'm going to sign off, but before I sign off, there's three things to become a Christian. Number one, you're going to have a conversation with God. You and God alone, you're going to say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious life. Two, you're going to want Jesus as your master, Lord, and Savior. Three, you're going to repent. Repent means turn to the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus. You'll read them. You'll obey them. If you don't obey them, you're not a Christian. You're going to hell. If you don't do what I just said, those three things, you're going to hell. The decision is yours. Amen? All right. Remember, my wife Selma coming on 55 minutes. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time.